the police hide many things from the public. As an officer myself, I have been made to hide some truly horrifying stuff away from the public. I will take them all to my grave, but this is a secret I just can't keep. You may have heard a rumor that the police have a special paranormal division for events that require skills outside the normal scope of policing. I heard this rumor too before I joined the force and asked around to no avail. Nobody knew about it, not even some of the senior officers, so I eventually dropped it but still felt like there was an element of truth to it. There was a quote I once heard as a boy, Be hospitable to rumors, for however grotesque they are, they always have some reason for existence. It was a normal day on the force and I was called in to investigate a break-in at a local residential home, on the north side of town. The house was along the quiet residential street. As we drove, lights began to switch on as night approached. Eventually reaching the destination and getting out of the car we saw it. A large, classic 1900s American house receded from the main path. Back in the day, I'm sure it looked beautiful with its huge porch fit for a family large bay windows to let plenty of light in, and light blue wooden paneling contrasting beautifully with a dark tiled roof. Now it's just a shadow of what it was. Boarding on the windows, holes in the roof, part of the porch roof has caved in making it unwalkable, and the garden leading up to the house is completely overgrown with nettles and weeds. The path leading up to the house is barely walkable as the path has deep cracks making the surface unbalanced and weeds have begun to grow onto the path. We decided to flip a coin to see who would talk to the neighbors and who would survey the house. I chose heads which meant I had to talk to the neighbors. I saw my partner turn on his torch and walk the path. Little did I know that would be the last time I saw him. The first neighbor I spoke to was a sweet old lady. She said that the house had been abandoned for years and was falling apart. Her bedroom window faces the house and she has seen lights on, figures walking around, and loud noises like crying and screaming. She said that the house has a long history of quite disturbing events, one of which was a story about a mother that was found guilty of killing her husband and their maid with a kitchen knife. The husband was stabbed over a hundred times or so she claimed. Another and more recent incident was how a feral dog had broken in through a window in the living room, killing the babysitter and the two children she was looking after. She insisted that the house must be haunted due to all these tragic events and even claims to have seen the very woman that killed the husband and made in the windows pacing up and down the halls. I thanked her for the information, which was rather helpful, and moved on. As I walk to the next house my radio comes to life and nearly makes me shit my pants. Partner, you there? I've been knocking on the front door no reply. I see movement inside. I'm going around the back to try there. Over. I responded copy that. Over. And moved on. I spoke to a few more neighbors, a delightful couple, and a few not so friendly neighbors. It's a mixed bag these days. It's either a nice hello or a spit in the eye. As I make my walk back my radio springs back to life with a frantic voice on the other end. Need back up immediately. Got a suspect wielding a knife. I've entered through the back door and am currently positioned in the kitchen. In front of me in the living room appears to be a tall female, dressed in a white gown, dancing from what it looks like. He said this as if he couldn't believe what he was watching. She is in possession of a large blood-stained kitchen knife. As I listened to this it sent chills up my spine. What the hell is going on? 10-4, approaching now. Over. I ran up the walkway to the house. As I battled my way through the nettles my radio sprang to life with a reply. She's moved position, walked out of the living room and into the dining room, moving to get visuals. Over. As I approached the front door I jumped at the sound of a manly scream of terror, followed by three loud gunshots which lit up the living room window in brief orange light. All I could hear after was wet smacking sounds, repeatedly followed by a weird crunching noise. I did not know it then but after it turns out my partner had been stabbed nearly over a hundred times with the same knife he reported. The sounds were this knife butchering his body like it was some type of pin cushion. As I approached the front door, to my surprise, it was slightly ajar. I pulled out my gun and spoke into my radio. Control. This is Unit 4. 
An officer's gun has been discharged. We need immediate backup at our location. I waited for confirmation before entering. This is control. Backup is on standby. Please clear the area before we make the dispatch. What they basically meant is that units are spread thin at the moment. Please confirm what we're up against so they can send the appropriate force like SWAT or K-9 units. I enter the building, torch, and gun in hand trembling with fear. Police, come out now with your hands up otherwise I will shoot. The first thing I notice when I walk through the large wooden door is that it is bone chilling cold, making me not want to move. When I breathed I could see the mist depart my lips. It was a huge contrast to the warm midsummer temperatures outside. I start to move throughout the house scouring the rooms. It's just as I thought. Old 1950s furniture, dusty with cobwebs, bare wooden floors, and ripped up drooping wallpaper along the walls. It was the perfect scene for a horror movie. As I walked into the living room I saw what I feared. It was my partner's boots. His body was lying out of sight in the kitchen and as I moved closer, the body got dragged by something fully into the kitchen. I moved forward shouting at the top of my lungs, show yourself now. I received from behind me a sinister childlike laugh causing me to spin around but nothing was behind me. That was it. I had seen enough and wanted out. I charged for the front door and when I reached it, I pulled on the handle with all my strength. I felt as if my soul had left my body. The door was jammed shut. I remembered my partner saying he got in through a back door so I run back to the kitchen. And there he was. He was on his back and his face was looking up at the ceiling. Blood was pooling all around him and his face had this look of sheer fear. It was like a face I'd never seen before. In fact, I didn't know faces could do that. I tried the back door but no. I couldn't get out. It was also jammed. My head was racing. I should have made the call there and then. But I just wanted to get out to be safe again. I thought it can't get worse than this but I was so wrong. Hell was about to open its gates. As I walked back into the living room I was greeted by the sound of a low guttural snarl. My eyes traced the room trying to find the source, and there it was. Glowing yellow eyes in the far corner near the window, the part where it was darkest. All I could see were those eyes for a few seconds, yellow eyes with black slits as pupils. It was followed by a nasty wide row of sharp pointy teeth, pulling off some sort of demonic smile. In between them, a long tongue, drooling with saliva all over the floor. It was at that moment I noticed what it was. A huge black dog. And it started to walk towards me. I looked at my options of escape around me. The front and the back door were locked and the windows had wood panels covering them. Stopping my escape through them. I had no choice. I would have to chance running upstairs and to find cover. I bolted with everything I had and so did this demonic dog. Barking, growling, gnashing as it tries to snap at my heels. I brace for it to sink its huge teeth into my legs but to my fortune, they did not. I flew upstairs as fast as I could, pulling most of the muscles in my legs. Finally, I ran down the long corridor and dashed into a nearby bedroom slamming the door behind me and then throwing my body onto the door. Normally I moan about being fat but this time I was actually grateful as my weight was just enough to hold it off. I stayed against the door a while before I heard the banging end. I saw it as my chance to move some large objects by the door and did so quickly and without noise. I took a look at the room I was currently in. A small crib was in the corner rocking slowly back and forth like someone was pushing it. At this point I had seen a lot worse than a crib moving on its own. What was worse was the dolls that were in the room. There must have been at least 30, a few on the floor covered in cobwebs. Some of the faces had been smashed in and their clothes ripped and savaged. The rest was on the shelves. Their faces were sad and dead but their eyes, even though they didn't move, always appeared to be looking straight at you. At this point, I decided to call it in and hope for some backup. Control this is Unit 4. Control I repeat this is Unit 4. A few minutes passed, and at that moment I felt completely alone. Fear and adrenaline taking over again even though I was exhausted then. Finally, a response. First, it came out extremely distorted and broken up. So I placed my ear closer to the speaker. This is, get out of my house. 
A womanly voice interrupts the speaker. It was like a whisper but clear enough to be heard. I dropped the radio nearly breaking it and stepped back. But then I got a much clearer. This is control. I grabbed the radio again reluctantly and explained to them what just happened. They then asked me a question that made everything seem surreal. Like I knew nothing about the world. It was then I knew God was not real and there was so much more to this world than most of us know. Would the situation be classed as paranormal? In my stunned dazed state I asked them to repeat. Would you say the things you have seen are unexplainable? I then said without thinking. Yes. Over. It responded copy that a paranormal team will be sent to your location shortly. Please remain calm. She said this with ease like this is a normal occurrence for them. When I explained it to her I thought she would think I'd gone crazy. But no. She knew from what I had said that it was a paranormal situation. Making the rumor true. That the team is real. I stayed in that room curled up in a ball against a corner like a child would do when their parents are fighting. Praying for it to end soon. Minutes more passed and I could hear banging on the bedroom door again. Suddenly shouting erupted from downstairs. How could you do this to our baby, you monster? It was a woman and a distraught manic one at that. She howled with sheer anger to which a man replied. Darling, it was the maid's fault she should have been watching her. He sounded very prim and proper. You were fornicating with her again. I know you were. You left our baby all alone upstairs. Left to suffocate in her cot all because you couldn't help yourself. You selfish stupid man. The voice was maddening at this point just purely primal and hysterical tones. Darling, put that down. You don't want to do that. I know you love me. We can work this out. Crashing, banging, and smashing is all I heard for a minute straight even with my hands up to my ears to block out the noise. When it all stopped, a sound came from downstairs. The woman was humming. London Bridge is falling down. A pain radiated from the sound, affecting anything nearby with its emotion and for the first time in years I cried uncontrollably. The humming slowly got closer to me. I could hear her walking up the stairs. The creaks of the floorboards giving away her location. I held my breath as I knew she had reached the bedroom door, still humming. The door handle was being tried but there was no way it could get through surely. Even with the certainty, I shut my eyes not wanting to look anymore and retreated to the darkness of my brain. Silence fell for a while and then to my utter horror a hushed voice spoke close to my ear, its cold breath lathering my neck causing the hairs to stand. My fair lady, I cried even harder in pure hysterical fear. I felt her cold bony hands on my face brushing up and down wiping off the tears, though I still dare not open my eyes for who knew what I was to see. Then like the gates of heaven had opened to accept me as one of their own, the door downstairs crashed open followed by shouts of, police, police. Running pounded up the stairs and the thing next to me whispered in my ears, don't worry little one, mommy will be with you, mommy will always love you. The door to the bedroom smashed open and people with flashlights, large guns, and priests with sage burning in their hands, entered the room allowing me to finally open my eyes. My mind went blank after that and I woke up in a hospital a few days later. Apparently, my body put me into a short coma due to extreme induced shock. It should have no effect on my body but shock like that will almost certainly leave PTSD. Not long after I was awake I was approached by some very shady characters flashing me an FBI badge. They said what I had seen can never be spoken about again for my family's sake and that the team that you heard about does not exist. I had to sign an NDA and was told to move on as if nothing happened but every time I try to sleep, I hear her, feel her, sense her and when I wake in a cold sweat, her final voice rattles my brain. Don't worry little one. Mommy will be with you. Mommy will always love you. Shout out to my super fans, Sweet Black Swan and Brooklyn. I really appreciate you guys supporting my channel, and I look forward to making more content for everyone.